Hi everybody and welcome back to Coffee and Bible Time. This is the third episode in our four part series on biblical discussions over raw topics. And if you have not seen our first two videos, you should check them out. The first one was on overcoming the guilt of sex before marriage. The second one is walking through a lifetime of mental health struggles. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to handle emotional outbreaks due to hormones or PMS. Um, and before we get started on this week's video, we wanted to quickly shout out our devotional membership. We have an email devotional membership that you can join where we give you guys a devotional every single week that goes in depth through the Psalms right now. It's $7.99 a month. We deliver it right to your email and we also give you access to a Facebook group with filled with friends who are all discussing what you learned in the email devotionals. Anything you want to yeah. add? I just made a post a couple days ago. Oh. So it's fun. Great. And just to start off, like I feel like it's important to talk about this as women because every area and part of our life needs to be under the reign and control of Christ. And so that includes what's going on inside of our body, what's happening physically. And looking at our lives holistically is in terms of our relationship with Christ is so important. All right, so we're just going to delve into this video, Mentor Mama. She is my mother, if you did not know this. And she has witnessed my own personal hormonal journey. <laughs> and I'm excited to hear about your story. So tell us what has been your own personal experience with hormones and PMS symptoms. I can tell you this. It's not fun, <laughs> um, but I think it is part of the female cycle, at least for some of us, that for me at least, I feel really irritable during that week before my period comes, or I should say came because I'm already like in menopause now. <laughs> But before, um, I would just be so ir easily irritable. I would cry at the drop of a hat. And quite honestly, I think I had kind of emotional outbursts where I said a lot of things before thinking through what I was gonna say. So yeah, how about you, Tay? Well, I guess I'd say for me, um, well, first of all, yeah, I really relate to that my own personal struggle with PMS is I have it bad and I know not everybody does here's the thing it doesn't even have to really necessarily be PMS I'm pretty I can be pretty moody would you say temperamental mm, not necessarily okay. I don't think okay because I, I can what I can say is that it's definitely increased during that time. <laughs> but I, otherwise, I don't think you are all the time, no. Listen, I know how to ramble for hours and hours. I don't really know what to say other than when I PMS, I, my own personal symptoms that I experience heavily are definitely ramped up anxiety. I'm in my head so much when I'm PMSing the week before my period. And I get pretty hopeless. And I feel like a lot more symptoms of, I think, depression and of course I'm like irritable to other people, but I think what I feel the most is the heaviness of what's going on inside of me, so yeah. And one thing I think we both forgot to mention was the need for chocolate. Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> We're talking about a major need for chocolate. No, there's, there's a major need for anything that's a carbohydrate. So talking about your personal experience of hormones and PMS, in your life, what was that like in marriage? Quite honestly, I don't know how your dad put up with me during all those years because it was really hard. And But what I think made it even harder than it had to be was that I was very private about everything. And it just wasn't something that your dad and I talked about. I was not proactive in telling him what I was going through. In fact, I definitely tried to hide it. <laughs> and it's completely impossible to hide when you're 
when, they, I mean, it's, when I'm a crazy everybody, person. Everybody else can see it. Yes. Yeah. But you, like, for me, I I couldn't. And I even know, like, I would deny it, like, at times, which is really bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but as I matured, I can tell you that I realized that if I just would have told him... Mm -hmm. Or I had a calendar that had like my menstrual cycle on there and what week was PMS so that he could have a vision as to what was coming. I think that would have been a lot more helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's safe to say that it was definitely some, there were some rough weeks during the, those years in my life. The good thing about telling somebody that you're going through a hard time emotionally, you don't even have to be on uh, PMSing, okay? It could just be you're having a hard time and you need extra grace. If you tell somebody you're going through a hard time, they're, you're giving them an opportunity to extend to you extra grace that you need. And that's what I feel like you were able to teach me because when I'm going through PMS, I say it. I tell them, I say, look, I know I'm on the verge of this. If you so much as to step one foot closer to me. So tell everyone your idea of improving PMS communications and what that looks like in terms of people's faith as well. Well, this is actually kind of like a super silly, crazy thing that I thought of, <laughs> but when all three of us, meaning Ashley Taylor and myself, were all experiencing PMS issues, I thought to myself, you know how when you go to a doctor's office and like above the door, there's like this little thing that swings out with like a colored flag on it. And I was just thinking, we should have these above each of our doors. So all three of our bedrooms are in close proximity upstairs. And I was thinking, okay, like during PMS week, you put out the yellow flag. Like you don't have to have a big heavy conversation about it, but then we all know like what's maybe going on. Um, and then when you're actually having your period, then put out the red flag. Okay. <laughs> And I said absolutely not. Yeah, she said absolutely not. But I know it sounds so silly, but I remember one time, Tay, when you had been sleeping for like 14 hours. <laughs> and everybody's asking, is Taylor okay? Don't you think you should go check on her? <laughs> and so finally, when we did check on you, it was because you were on your period. And I I know for me, I used to sleep a lot, oh, extra yeah. hours. Oh, yeah. Napping, all that. Right. See, so we wouldn't have had to wake you up if you had had your red <laughs> flag out. <laughs> but that said, it's just improving the communication, I think, mm -hmm. is what's most important. Mm -hmm. Did you feel any shame involving PMS or, like, opening up about that? Oh, yeah. So I did feel kind of really bad, like, that I would turn into like this ugly monster well society also i'm just gonna say this i think that culture has perpetuated this idea of women being monsters especially on a period i don't think that's true it's not to a large degree it really is not your fault that you're experiencing those emotions. What you do with it is a different story, right, which right. we'll get to. But at the same time, it's like, ugh, I don't know. I just feel bad when we perpetuate this narrative of us being monsters. It's like actually kind of like insane what the body goes through. It's, it's really beautiful in a lot of ways that, you know, periods happen so that you can eventually like have kids and like your mm -hmm. body's preparing for the next cycle like it really is a beautiful thing that doesn't always have to be looked at negatively but at the same time I get I get what you're saying yeah, yeah. I was really saying it from the context of the shame part because that's that's how I felt inside like I felt like oh I felt that why too. do I turn into this crazy person why am I you know saying things that are hurting people 
So it's not really something that I ever felt comfortable. I never talked to my mother about it. So, and I didn't really talk to dad about it. I didn't think he would understand, but mm-hmm. now in retrospect, um, my dad. Yeah, I think that I definitely should have, and it wouldn't have helped. And then I wouldn't have had the shame mm-hmm. because it would have made sense to him. Right. Opening up, if you open up around this a safe person, the shame is eliminated, I think. But keeping it in makes it harder. Yeah. And I also think you can be a lot more proactive as a couple. Like if you know it's coming, you could be praying about it. Well, anyways, I'm going to read this quote that I found from an article discussing PMS. We found several articles that were good. We're going to leave them linked down below. Um, But this is just challenging, um, and it's based on the verse in Galatians 5.16 that says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The quote says, It's important to realize at that point that we are still responsible for how we act. Jesus did not tell us to love our neighbor only when we feel like it. He gave us a powerful example when he showed grace and mercy, even while hanging on the cross. Nowhere does the Bible tell us that we can be mean just because our hormones lead us in that direction. In fact, scripture promises that we are not controlled by our flesh if we rely on the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm just going to say that was really convicting for me because I think that it's so easy to, to make the hormones an excuse. I do it. Oh, my hormones are making me mean and snappy. Just get over it. Or I can just say whatever I want and have a free little hall pass because my body's making me do it. When in reality, scripture tells us you need to walk by the spirit and not gratify the desires of the flesh. Because when you're going through hormones and PMS, when you lash out or give in, you're giving in to your flesh because that's what the flesh wants. I can tell you what, my flesh wants to strangle Ashley. (laughs) It does. (laughs) It's saying Taylor do it, inch, inch a little bit closer. And I wanted to strangle you the other day. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I'm PMSing as we film this. Perfect timing. It is perfect timing. Aside from hormones, you have to walk by the spirit and not gratify the flesh every day of your life, no matter what you're going through. And so I just think that's really convicting. So did you ever feel convicted by the way that you acted and how did you let the Holy Spirit work in those difficult times? Well, I think sometimes it's actually really hard to discern between if my body is just taking control over this versus am I doing this willfully? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's really important to that if there's a moment in time where you do have an, an outlash just because it happens. I think what's what's important and what is the power of the Holy Spirit is convicting you of like, you know what, you need to apologize yeah. because you were a little bit out of line. And I actually mm-hmm. think that's something that you're really good at. You are like you, like uh, oftentimes you'll come back and say, you know, it might be that night or maybe the okay, next day, yeah. but you're you're like I realized. I was just a little bit out of line, and I think that that is a good way of the Holy Spirit working inside us. Um, So I I don't know. I also remember doing various Bible studies over the last 20 years, and I feel like in a lot of those Bible studies, it convicted me, and the power of the Holy Spirit worked in reminding me through Scripture, for example, Um, that I should guard my tongue. And so maybe, you know, a a Bible study would be coming up about that. And and it would alert me and maybe draw me to be a little bit more cognizant and try to guard my tongue during that time of the month. Or sometimes it might just be Jesus saying, Ellen, I love you unconditionally. And this is hard for you, but that doesn't mean I love you any less. And so... Um, you'll get through this each month and really just like you said if you try to think of it um, in a in a bigger scheme of things um, it can 
obviously having the periods can produce children and that's just such a beautiful thing so mm -hmm. so what would you suggest to families who are going through this yeah so what I really really would stress is communication mm -hmm. um, and I think that really starts with the mom or the wife and making sure that your husband knows like what's going on what does your menstrual cycle calendar look like have a conversation about things that you're feeling and may do and act out during pms explaining that you know to the best of my ability i am going to try to restrain myself or um, acknowledge that i may be a little haywire um, Really, to me, it's like opening up communication. I think it's also opening up communication with your children. And I'm, and I'm not just speaking of girls, too. I think it's important for the young men in the household Period. to also know that this is real so that when they get into a relationship at some point in time, they can be understanding. Or they should be understanding of their mother going through it or should be understanding of their sisters. sisters. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So... I think that that would be um, number one, but I also just would say that that's not really a license though to like be as mean as crazy, just like, Absolutely. you know, be unloving. I Absolutely. think, you know, you have to kind of draw the line between mm -hmm. those two things. But um, if you can also just pray about it and ask by the power of the Holy Spirit to help you, I think also too, like exercising and trying to eat right if you can, <laughs> balance the chocolate and the vegetables. <laughs> um, I think that that helps too. Thank you for those words of wisdom, Mentor Mama. Um, what's so great about this series is that you just are able to speak so much wisdom into it because these are all things that you've gone through. And I love that we as your daughters can like kind of share that with you and experience that and I'll treasure these videos forever honestly for myself. I just wanted to say one more thing and I know this isn't PMS related but it's definitely hormone related and that is is now I'm actually have been going through menopause oh, <laughs> and yeah. that presents itself with a whole nother set of right. emotional and um, hormonal issues and I think from having learned what I learned about PMS, that that actually has helped me going into this stage of life. Not that it's necessarily made it any easier, but the whole principle of being, and I've told you guys a lot, you know, about why I was crying or this or that or, you know, related to it. So I think kind of the same communication principle applies to that as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Whatever you're going through, I think that Galatians passage can be applied. Whatever you're struggling with in your flesh, you have to remember that you need to live by the Spirit. Easier said than done, but prayer is where we go back to the throne, um, throne room of God and ask for His grace and His mercy and His strength. So I just wanted to leave on this other quote from um, one of the articles that we found that said, Every round of PMS is an opportunity to fix our eyes on a future where our whole being, body, mind, and spirit will be finally freed from the effects of sin. Mm. That really resonated with me. And not even just for PMS, but I, I do get PMS. I experience the anxiety and the depression and the, the feeling trapped inside my mind. I feel that every month and it's hard. But even aside from that in just everyday life, whatever trial that you're going through, like let it be a reminder of the future that you have in perfect peace with Christ and that this world is not our home. Amen. Amen. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to stay tuned for our last video in the series, which is going to be on... <laughs> mm. Oh, how to be comfortable in your own skin. How to be comfortable in your own skin. Mm. All mm. right. Thank you for listening. Be sure to check out our email devotional membership for $7.99 a month. You get three devotionals every week that in depth into the Bible study or three days worth of devotionals. And yeah, 
we want to see you there and interact with you on our Facebook group chat. So yeah, definitely. See you guys in our next video. Bye. Bye.